Ayan, so na ako diri sa Kubon Market. I-vlog ang poem nga gikan sa babae nga bilbilon. Kaya ang setting ani nga poem, diri man sa Kubon Market. So ang poem na diri sa book nga Tinubdan, no? nga anthology. It's a literary anthology nga published by XU Press. Ang editors, ani mga kauban na kong teacher sa English department. So, kini siya nga poem. It's about women, no? mga babae nga bilbilod. Me in this vlog, atong tanawon ang lines sa poem o atong i-analyze po ito Daghan mga babae makarelate ani nga poem kay halos tanan babae na ibilbil sa manako na ko ibilbil and uh, makita na to diri nga poem unsa ibatiun sa isa ka babae kung tawgon siya sa sa street no kun ay mo tawag sa iya nga boy bilbilon ha unsa ibatiun sa babae ana o uh, kani pud na video makarealize pud ang mga lalaki uh, unsa di ay ang naa sa una o pagbati sa usa ka babae nga I will be reading lines from the poem and we'll also be showing you some video clips which serve as adaptation to the poem. And there are random shots that I got while I was walking in Google Market, which is the setting of the poem. And there can be unidentified people which are shown or faces, but their identities are not revealed. And for those with speaking lines, and whose faces are shown, I got their consent or approval to be part of the film. I am using the Visayan language to promote our language, Binisaya, but in the interpretation or discussion later, I will really use the English language so that I could reach a larger number of audience, and I believe that the theme of the poem is truly universal and everybody should know about it. Ibaklay ko skogon. Apoya gaba ang tul karon wa paghihapoy tarong pedestrian lane Ug nay na nitpit nako wa ko ni balibaliha apa na bikil ko sa iyang hirit Ang akong suot, body fit dress. Kabalo ko, himsog akong panglawas. Hindi ka po'y nataong kong hiyap. Wa po'y natubag. Wa ko kapanagang. Let's see. Sa iyang pananaw, lapad akong batang. Sa iyang pananaw, humok akong braso. Sa iyang pananaw, makumot niya akong tutoy. Sa iyang pananaw, sudan ko. Pahalag matika ko. Kapoy na kung tanaw sa kong kaugalingon, gamit ang mata sa laing tao. Nga naman di ay bilbilon ko. Diba, there's more of me to love? Now let us proceed to the analysis and discussion of the poem. I am your facilitator, Kathleen Siadahar, and I am a literature teacher around 30 years now. So join me as we have our discussion. And I want um, literature to be open to all, meaning to be appealing to people, not just to students. That's why I'm doing this vlog about literary or poetry analysis. So from the title alone, we can already see the point of view or the persona 
Like, who is the persona? Who is the speaker? It is the babayi. It's the girl. It can be a lady. It can be a woman. Gikan. So, meaning coming from. Alright? And bilbilon means that uh, her tummy is large. Or it's big. She's not pregnant. Okay? But probably it's just her, her body structure. Or perhaps... Um, it uh, it runs in the family. The, that's why uh, she has that kind of body. All right. So uh, these are the first four lines. Nibaklay ko kogon. So meaning to say, um, the persona is walking along kogon. So this refers to kogon market. Ngapuriya gaba hangtod karon wa pagihapoy tarong pedestrian lane. So she's actually complaining about the street that there is no clear pedestrian lane. Ugnay na nitsit na ko. So, it means that somebody was whistling. Okay? Or, you you might want to call it cat call. So, what's a cat call? So, to make a whistle, shout, or comment of a sexual nature to a woman passing by. Actually, in 2019, there's already a law on this that is passed in the Philippines that you're actually prohibited to do this. So, it's called Safe Spaces Act or Republic Act number 11313 signed on April 17, 2019. And the author of this was Senator Risa Hontiveros and signed into law by President Rodrigo Duterte. So what does it tell us? So it is now a law that penalizes wolf whistling, cat calling, misogynistic and homophobic slurs, unwanted sexual advances, and other forms of sexual harassment in public places, workplaces, and schools, as well as in online spaces. So, be careful if you will be doing this to anybody because you may be penalized. It's also called as Bawal Bastos Law. So, particularly Section 4, let me read, Gender-Based Streets and Public Spaces Sexual Harassment. The crimes of gender-based streets and public spaces, sexual harassment, are committed through any unwanted and uninvited sexual actions or remarks against any person, regardless of the motive for committing such action or remark. So, when we say unwanted, hindi gusto, the, the, the person didn't like it, or you were not invited to, to make whistling or any comment like hoy sexy hoy guapa hoy busok hoy bilbilon so th those are uh, sa some remarks that uh, some people in the street might call you so they can be penalized for that based on this law then to continue Wa kuni balibaliha so meaning the the girl or the woman did not mind Panabikil ko sa iyang hirit. So, it's like she was distracted with what this person added. Okay? And what is the statement of that person? Hoy bilbilon, nga nung sexy man ka. And then further, she describes what she was wearing. Ang akong suot, body fit dress. Kabalo ko, himsog akong panglawa. So, meaning, she's aware that She's a li little bit probably chubby, himsog chubby. Uh, so the the body structure is somewhat chubby. Gikapoy na tawon kog hiyak. So meaning to say that she's tired um, controlling her breath so that her tummy will not look large. Wa koy na tubag. So she was not able to reply anything. Wa ko kapanagang. Like she was defenseless. She, she was caught off guard. And so. The last line for this line, she said, Litsi. So it's like a curse. <laughs> she was cursing. Litsi. It's like saying shit or damn it. Or something like that. Apan kabaluko unsay dagan sa yang otok. So now she is describing what could be in the mind of the man who was whistling and the man who was calling her, Hoy bilbilon nga nung sexy mangka. Okay. So. Sa iyang pananaw, so in his vision, ning awas akong kabilbilan. So, the, the, the tummy, the, the, the fats are <laughs> exploding, <laughs> something like that, ning awas. 
Okay, overflowing. Okay, ning awas. So the fats are overflowing. Sa iyang pananaw, busok akong lubot. So my ass, lubot is ass. My ass or my butt is very big. Busok. Sa iyang pananaw, lapad akong batang. So my my hips are wide. Lapad is wide. Sa iyang pananaw, humok akong braso. So my my arms are are soft. Humok soft. Sa iyang pananaw, makumot niya akong tutoy. So tutoy is breast. So he he can he can squeeze. No, makumot is squeeze. He can squeeze my breast. Sa iyang pananaw, sudan ko. I'm food. Sudan is viand particularly. Or food in general. Okay? So, it reminds me of one movie, a short film before. Ikatatlong putahe. Directed by Joe Bacchus. Where the putahe there can be the girl. There was this male character and then he said... That's why I'm coming back here because of this pulutan, of this finger food. And his eyes are on the girl. These lines present to us visual imagery. So we can imagine the, the appearance of, of the girl. And the poet also uses tactile imagery. So something that we can touch, like humok akong braso, makumot ang tutoy. No? So, something that can be touched, makumot, squeeze, humok, that is soft. And, of course, we can't help but also apply feminist criticism in this poem. So, what is feminist criticism? From the word female, feminine, alright? So, we look at how the woman is treated in the text. The relationship of the woman and the man in the text. Like, what is the role presented about the woman, what's going on in the life of the woman in the text. So th that's what we do when we are doing feminist criticism. Is the woman happy? Uh, is the woman sad? So we look into the feelings of the woman. In feminist criticism, particularly if you tackle um, yeah, feminist theory, you can encounter this article, The Male Gaze, written by Laura Mulvey. So, what did she tell us about this male gaze? So, male is lalaki, the man, the man looking at the woman. So, to quote lines from the article of Laura Mulvey, she said that there are two categories of the male gaze. The first one is voyeuristic. It positions woman as sex object. So, from the eyes of the man or a boy, the woman or the girl is a sex object. It's similar to peeping tam or in Visayan, mananggab or manilip. So, it's like you are looking at the woman like while she is dressing up or while she is taking a bath. And this is also applied in films. So, when we look at like pornographic films it positions the man to be looking at the woman and the woman is now a sex object so that's the first category the second category is fetishistic it places the woman on a pedestal to be worshipped so if you have the line hoy bilbilon nga nung sexy man ka Coming from a woman, I would have mixed feelings. Because when we say sexy, okay, it's it's somewhat, um, it's like a compliment, okay? When somebody tells you sexy. Actually, it depends on the person. But if you have the line sexy and then you have the word bilbilon, I mean, will you be flattered if you are called such? So, I think it will vary from one woman to the other. But the, the main point here is that the man was never invited to say that. Alright? Um, th the comment is uncalled for. So, so wh why would you say that to the woman? So, to continue what Laura Mulvey said, Men can live out his fantasies and obsessions 
through linguistic command by imposing them on the silent image of women still tied to her place as bearer of meaning, not maker of meaning. So although Mulvey wrote this one in 1975, but of course it's still very relevant even up to now. So if we, we go back to the line, uh, men can live out his fantasies and obsessions through linguistic commands. So the man can be whistling, the man can be saying those lines, hoy bilbilon, hoy sexy. So it's like he was imposing these lines, no, linguistic words, okay, imposing them on the silent image of women so the, the the woman is just silent and sometimes yeah she, she's caught off guard she is tied to her place as bearer of meaning not maker of meaning like she's just carrying carrying the meaning and the meaning comes from the man like the man can say anything on the woman because the woman is just silent she was even surprised why, why did that man say that to me all right so that that is the positioning here so the woman is inferior because it is the man who gives out who voices out his comments on the woman so the woman becomes the victim here and that is what Mulvey wants to tell us and also what the poem wants to present to us so to continue with the rest of the lines, gikapoy na kung tanaw sa kung kaugalingon. So I'm tired looking at myself, gamit ang mata sa laing tao, using the eyes of other people. What does it mean? Like people will give her comments, oy tambok, oy fat, or bilbilon. So those those are um, images coming from other people, the eyes, mata, mata sa laing tao. So, those are comments coming from the eyes of other people, the mouth of other people. Like, why would other people say that to you? Like, why? Don't I have a mirror in my house? <laughs> if you are going to reply that way. Of course, I have a mirror in my house. I know. I know how I look like. So, why do you have to say that to me? It's something like that. Gikapoy, I'm tired. Di ka po'y nakugtan aw sa akong kagalingon gamit ang mata sa laing tao. Nga naman di ay ug bilbilon ko. Like, so what? So what if I have a fat tummy? So what if my belly is fat? ba? There's more of me to love. I mean, this last line is, is very dramatic. Like, why do you have to judge me based on my tummy? Based on my body structure? There's more. There's more of me. Not just my physical being. There's more. There's more of me to love. Okay? So, for the reflection part now, in society, women are dictated on how to look like. Let me give you examples. We have so many ads in print media, in social media. Like For example, this one. A flutter tummy even after baby number four. Like, what's wrong? I, uh, perhaps the person is concerned of your health. Okay, fine. But what if there's nothing wrong with you? Like, you're, you are just okay. Your health is okay. So what if your tummy is big? Or just like this one, no? an ad from Marie France, body perfect, large to sexy small after four months. So that's what they promise on the woman. And if you're the woman and like what if you cannot afford? What if you cannot afford to go to this gym or the, this fitness salon? Okay? Or what if you can afford? Okay? Your boyfriend or husband will say, Oi, why are you going there? Huh? Perhaps you have another man. Kisi pasiksihan ni mo. <laughs> right? Like that can also be another reaction from the men. Or, yeah, yeah, really, the worst thing is, what if you don't have money? Or, do I really have to conform to what society wants me to be? Or to look like? Do I have to conform to that? So for me that's my that's one of my reflections. Women are dictated on how to look like. That's why if you look at slimming ads, many target on women. 
like the Century Tuna, although there is also an ad for men on Century Tuna, but I, I would say that especially on Slimming Coffee or um, those tablets, they they target on women. Why? Okay, so it would just build on a woman's insecurity because if you are fat, you must do something with your body. You have to be slim. That's what these ads are telling a woman. There are also some issues that I want to present um, based on the poem. Like the image that you see here. It's a body shaper. So if you are fat, okay, use the body shaper. <laughs> okay? So again, targeting on women. And yeah, the, the entire poem talks about body shaming. Uh, need I say more? Body shaming. You have nowhere to go. If you are very thin, people will say, Why are you so thin? If you are fat, why are you so fat? Yeah, body shaming. And um, it can also lead to this disorder. Like if the woman takes it emotionally, she might not want to eat anymore. So, anorexia nervosa, an emotional disorder characterized by an obsessive desire to lose weight by refusing to eat. So, if she is always bombarded with those comments, why are you so fat? Why, why are you bilbilon? So, the woman might not want to eat anymore and it can result to anorexia nervosa. So, yeah, as what I mentioned earlier, you have so many ads on the corset. So, use the corset, the body shaper. And, you know, these, these <laughs> garments can cause difficulty in breathing. Yeah, this is the corset and also the body shaper. If you go back to the line in the poem, you have there, Gikapoy na kung sigig hiyak. Like, uh, holding your breath just for you to look slim. So, it's really an issue. And I also want to include this in my discussion. Like, what is the connection between the woman in bikini and the whiskey? Okay? Because we are talking about um, bodies here. Alright? So, also about the male gaze. Now, this is what media will, will present to us. Like the ad of the White Castle whiskey. Ever since it started. Like old, um, old calendars like 1982, that's Lorna Tolentino. You have 1993, Christina Gonzalez. And then um, somewhere in between, you have Carmi Martin. You even have Roxanne Ginoo. And then you have here... Meg Imperial in 2016. So, it's a whiskey, alright? But, you have the image of a woman in red bikini. So, what's the connection? Okay? What's the connection? Again, it, it feeds on the male gaze, right? And, the woman here is, like, put on a pedestal, like a sex object. And, of course, um... We don't know why a woman has large tummy. So we don't have the right to judge. Because probably she has this myoma. And this myoma or uterine fibroid can cause enlargement of the tummy. Like, like the, the images here. The woman is, is not pregnant. Um, I also want to include this because um, this painting is created by a woman, Suzanne Valadon. And if you see the, the tummy of the woman, okay? It's also bulging. She's also bilbilon. It can present to us a reality that women's bodies are, are not flat or perfect. And that's the reality. So you see, uh, this painting comes from the point of view of a female artist. And let us see another painting, but this time from the male artist. And let us try to contrast. So from the male point of view, you have here Olympia. So, this the artist is Edward Manet. So, you see, her tummy is flat. Alright? So, in contrast to the earlier painting done by Suzanne Valadon, it's telling us that the woman understands her body, but the man, no, the male artist, would want to project the woman to be like a goddess, Olympia, or somebody who is perfect. No bulges in the tummy. And we have to take also into consideration that as a woman gets older, her metabolism gets slower, right? 
So, you are not as energetic or as athletic as you were before. You could not exercise anymore. That's why you have the building of the fat no? or fats in your body. So, yeah, we don't have any right to call somebody, hey, you're fat, hey, you're bilbilon, because we don't know the situation. So, to conclude, the last line really of the poem has this impact. So, there's more to a person, particularly to a woman, than the physical aspect. We have to see the total person, not just give judgment based on the physical appearance.